Inshallah, the focus of this khutbah today is going to be on the uh, virtue of tawakkul or trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, reliance upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَمَنْ يَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ فَهُوَ حَسْبُهُ Whoever depends on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whoever relies on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is enough for him. Allah suffices him. All we need is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In another ayah in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنْ يَنْصُرْكُمُ اللَّهِ فَلَا غَالِبَ لَكُمْ If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you victory, who can give you defeat? Nobody. وَإِنْ يَخْدُلْ مَنْ ذَا الَّذِي يَنْصُرُكُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ And if he forsakes you, who after other than him can give you victory? وَعَلَى اللَّهِ فَلْيَتَوَكَّلِ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ So let the believers put their trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our protector. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our guardian. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَعَتَسِمُوا بِاللَّهِ هُوَ مَوْلَاكُمْ فَنِعْمَ الْمَوْلَى وَنِعْمَ النَّصِيرِ It is related that Imam Ali al-Ridha, he came to a city called Nishapur. And 20,000 people came out to meet him. And they said to him, حَدِثْنَا حَدِيثًا مِنْ أَبَائِكْ Give us a hadith from your forefathers. So he said, I heard from my father. I heard from my father, Musa al-Qadim, who heard from his father, Ja'far al-Sadiq, who heard from his father, Muhammad al-Baqir, who heard from his father, Zayn al-Abideen, who heard from his father, Al-Husayn ibn Ali, who heard from his father, Imam Ali, Karam Allahu Wajha, who heard from his father-in-law, Al-Habib al-Mustafa, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, who heard from Jibreel alayhi salam, who heard from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, talk about a golden chain, a golden salat, who heard from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who said, La ilaha illallah, husni. La ilaha illallah is my fortress. Faman qala la ilaha illallah, dakhala husni. So whoever says, La ilaha illallah has entered my fortress. Waman dakhala husni, amina min adabi. And whoever enters my fortress, he is protected from my punishment. <laughs> However, being in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's fortress does not preclude that we will experience some hardships. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Am hasibtum an tadkhulu jannata wa lamma ya'lam illahu al-ladheena jahadu minkum wa ya'lam as-sabirin. He said, do you expect to enter paradise? Do you just expect to enter paradise without experiencing struggle? or showing patience. In the Hadith in Ahmad, and there's different narrations in Tirmidhi, the Prophet ﷺ was asked, Ya Rasulullah, Ayyum Nas Ashaddu Bala'an O Messenger of God, who among the people will have the most severe tribulations? What did he say, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Did he say, Al-Mushrikeen, Al-Kafirin, Ahl Al-Kitab? What did he say? Qala Al-Anbiya. He said, the Prophets, Listen to what he says, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And keep in mind, he is khayr al-khalqillah. He is the best of creation. He has the station of mahabba. Ala wa ana habib Allah wa la fakhr. He is the beloved of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Listen to what he says. Laqad uzitu fi Allah wa ma yu'da ahadun. This hadith ibn Majah, I have been tortured for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like no one has been tortured. I have been frightened for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like no one has been frightened. So three days have gone by. In the narration of Timothy, 30 days have gone by. And Bilal and I have not eaten any food except for a little bit of food that Bilal was able to hide under his armpit. The context of the hadith is during the muqata'a, the sanctions against the Bani Hashim. Alhamdulillah ala kulli hal. Yet he said, praise be to Allah in every state. The first people called to paradise on the Yawm Al-Qiyamah are those who praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in times of adversity and in times of prosperity. Why? Because they had tawakkul. Now, there's true tawakkul. There's true trust in Allah and there's pseudo-trust. In Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. True trust is called tawakkul. It's a four or five infinitive. But tawakkul, a form six infinitive. This is pseudo trust. What is true trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What is tawakkul? Is that 
that we do our utmost best in all things and then trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We know the famous uh, hadith of Tirmidhi, the Bedouin came into the masjid without hobbling his camel and it was running around outside and the Prophet said, so whose camel is this? He said, it's my camel. To go to Allah. I have trusted in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, I, he said, I, I he said, hobble her first, tie her down first, then trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Many of our youth, they want to gain knowledge, they have good intentions. I want to gain ilm. I want to study sacred knowledge. But three hours a day, they're on their phone. Five hours a day, the average American spends five hours, that's us, the average American spends five hours a day watching television. The opiate of the masses. And they say, I want to gain knowledge. Don't insult Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with your tawakul. One time Sayyidina Omar said, a group of men sitting around. And he said, what are you doing? And they said, we're not going to go out and uh, earn a living. We refuse to go out and earn a living. Because we have trusted, we have tawakul on Allah. He censured them and said, get up and go do something. You think gold and silver are going to descend from the skies for you? Not for you. We must do our best. The Prophet said, Al Kingisu, Mandana Nafsabu, wa Ali Alima Bad al Mot. The intelligent one is the one who suppresses his lower desires and works for whatever comes after death. Wa Ajizu, Man Atba al Nafsabu, Hawaha, wa Tamanna al Allah. Well, the unintelligent one is the one who enslaves his nafs to his desires and has vain hopes. Tamanna, Man Tawakkul, vain hopes. In Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Say, I don't want to go to Jannah. Yet his food is haram. His clothing is haram. He looks at the haram. He listens to the haram. Ahmad bin Ajib, the great Moroccan scholar and mystic, he defines tawakkul. He says, At tawakkul, fikatul qalb, billahi hatta la ya'tamida ala shayin siwahu. He says, tawakkul is confidence of the heart in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that it relies on nothing besides Him. Or a connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Reliance upon Him out of knowledge. And that you have more confidence than what is in the control of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than what is in your control. In reality, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala controls everything. And then he says there's three degrees of tawakkul. He says, فَعَدْنَاهُ The lowest degree of tawakkul is to be with Allah like someone who entrusted his affairs to a kind and caring confidant. But he says even at that level, the lowest level, there's some uh, ittiham, there's some suspicion there. And then he says, well, what's that to who? And the middle level is to, is like a child being with his mother. And the child goes to his mother, but only when the child is in need. So he says, this is also deficient. He's only going to his mother, but only when there's a need. It's not full to work with. And he says, وَأَعْلَاهُ أَن تَكُونَ كَالْمَيْجِتِ مَعَ الْخَاسِلِ And the highest level is to be like a corpse, a dead body in the hands of an undertaker. Now, a Muslim relies upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in all times, but we should be especially cognizant of our tawakkul at certain specific times, according to our sacred text. And I don't have a lot of time, I'm going to mention two of them. <clears throat> the first one, when we make a firm decision to do something, when we have azima, resoluteness, when we analyze things, the pros and the cons, the good and the bad, and we make an informed decision. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِنَ اللَّهِ لِنْتَ لَهُمْ Speaking directly to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. He says, it is, and there's so much going on in the Arabic. It is out of an incredible mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you have gentleness. You deal with them with gentleness. If you were harsh or hard-hearted, you would have seen people flee from your presence. So overlook their faults. And ask forgiveness for them. 
was shared with Hunz al-Amr and consult them in affairs of the community. فَإِذَا عَزَمْتَ And then when you've made a firm decision, when you have a resolute decision, فَتَوَقَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ Then trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ الْمُتَوَكِّلِينَ For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves those who place their trust in Him. The second instance when we should have extra tawakkul ala Allah is when we reach the limit of our uqul, of our intellects. The intellect has a clear jurisdiction. The aql is very important, obviously. It's how we make sense of the world. It's how we live. It works in conjunction with the revelation. How many ayat of the Quran and the hadith of the Prophet <coughs> encourage us to seek knowledge, develop our intellects, but sometimes we need to submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even if the uh, intellectual understanding uh, eludes us in trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When Musa alayhi salam brought the Bani Israel out of Egypt and they're, in, and they're standing in front of the Red Sea, and behind them is Fir'aun and his junood. The Bani Israel, they said to Musa, Inna la mudrakun. We're done. It's over. This is what their intellect suggested to them. There's an ocean in front of us. Fir'aun is behind us. Where are we going to go? They forgot who they were dealing with. Musa alayhi salam, Rasulullah. And who is Musa alayhi salam dealing with? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The one who said, Ida qada amran fa inna ma yakunu lahu kan fa yakun. The one who said, whatever he decrees a matter, he merely says to it be, and there it is. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told Musa alayhi salam to strike the, the sea with your staff. As we know, Musa alayhi salam, he didn't hesitate. He didn't think, well, what is that going to do? Let me think about that for a minute. He heard it and immediately he obeyed. He obeyed. Because he trusts Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He has tawakkul. One time the Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam was in the house of one of his companions, Abu Ubaid. And Abu Ubaid cooked the sheep for the Prophet And there were several companions there. So he says, Ya Abu Ubaid, now win me at dirah, give me the shoulder of the sheep. He says, here you go, Ya O Messenger of God. The Prophet took a few bites and passed it to the Sahaba. And he said, Ya Abu Ubaid, now win me at dirah, give me the other shoulder. So here he is, took a few bites, passed it to the Sahaba. Ya Abu Ubaid, now win me at dirah. Give me another shoulder. This hadith is a dignity. Give me a shoulder. Ya Rasulullah. How many shoulders do the sheep have? Listen to the response of the Prophet sallallahu By him who holds my soul in his hand. If you had just remained silent, you would have given me a shoulder every single time I asked you. We have to trust Allah and His Messenger, even if it goes beyond our intellects. We have to have taslim, Islam. Islam means submission. Abdullah and Sari, he says, فَإِنَّ مِنْ ضُرُورَةِ الْعَبُدِيَّةِ أَنْ يَعْلَمَ الْعَبْدُ أَنْ يَعْلَمَ الْعَبْدُ أَنَّ الْحَقَّ سُبْحَانَ وَتَعَالَى وَمَالِكُ الْأَشَاءِ وَحْدَى And it is from the necessities of good ubudiyya, of good servitude, that the slave knows that the truth, subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is the owner of everything by himself. The essence of Ubudiya is to have good etiquette, good adab with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now I want to share with you, so I'm running out of time, one of the greatest manifestations of beautiful Ubudiya from the life of our master Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In the year of sadness, Amr Huzun, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, lost his life partner. The love of his life. I say the Khadija to Kubra, alayhi salam. 25 years of marriage, over 25 years. She was his only wife. She passes away, alayhi salam. And then Abu Talib passes away, ostensibly, apparently, the protector of the Prophet. And he was the chief of the Bani Hashim. And now Abu Lahab is the chief of the Bani Hashim. So the Prophet's situation in Mecca has become extremely precarious. So the Prophet sallallahu he decides to go to Ta'if, right? And Ta'if and Mecca were sister cities. And if Quraysh was the major tribe in Mecca, then the Bani Thaqif was the major tribe in Ta'if. And if Abu Sufyan ibn Harb was the leader of the Quraysh in Mecca, Abu Mas'ud al-Thaqafi was the leader of the Bani Thaqif at Ta'if. 
The Prophet وسلم, he walks through the desert 60 kilometers. 60 kilometers with Zayd ibn Haritha, with one companion. They couldn't even afford a conveyance. Four days, five days he's walking. He gets a meeting with Abu Mas'ud and his leaders, and immediately he's rejected in five minutes. Can you imagine you have a job interview in London, you fly halfway around the world, the manager of the firm comes out, look, takes one look at you and says, no, you're dismissed. But you were sitting on a plane drink, drinking mineral, mineral water. The Prophet وسلم, has walked through the desert 60 kilometers. <laughs> in the desert. And not only is he rejected, he's insulted. He first went to the leaders and then he tries the masses. And he stays in Taif for a few days. And after a couple of days, certain people began to gravitate towards him because he has a magnetic personality. And this angered the leaders of the ta of Taif, of Bani Thaqif. So they turned loose on him. Slaves and children and the riffraff, thugs, standing on the street corner. And they formed two lines because the city was walled. They formed two lines towards the exit. And the Prophet ﷺ was forced to walk between them. And he was walking, they would punch and kick him, knock him down, then pick him up by his shoulders and punch and kick him again until he left the city. Now he leaves the walls of the city. And every time he lifted his foot, according to the traditions, stones were hurled at him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he began to pick up the pace, but they were aiming for his feet and his legs. Their intention was to disable him, to force him to crawl, because they wanted to pelt him more effectively with the stones. This was a murder attempt. They're trying to kill him. Zayd tries to shield him. The Prophet pushes him away. Zayd is bleeding from his head to his toe. The Prophet وسلم, is bleeding from his head to his toe. They follow him for three miles. Can you imagine a group of people chasing you for three miles, throwing stones at you? The Prophet وسلم, he said, I don't know where I was until I reached Qunuth His sandals were soaked in his own blood. وسلم. He says, according to Bukhari, that the angel of the mountains called out, called out to me. And greeted me and said, Oh Muhammad, if you want, I'll cause these two mountains to uh, collapse upon the Bani Taif, the Bani Faqif of Taif. Listen to what he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I have hope of their descendants that they'll come and they won't associate with Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And then he made such a dua that shook the heavens. We shouldn't forget a dua silah al mu'min Supplication. Dua is the weapon of the believer. A dua mukhul ibadah. Dua is the essence of worship. Laysa shay'un akrama ala Allah min dua There is nothing more honored by Allah than dua. Ittaqi da'wat al madhlu. Innahu laysa baynaha wa bayna Allah hijab. Fear the, fear the prayer of the, of the oppressed. For indeed, there is uh, no barrier between it and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And his words are recorded. Ibn Ishaq records his dua. And there's some weakness in the chain. But the ulama say that it's very, very apparent that these words emanated min qalbihi sharif sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we take lessons from this. There's an etiquette in adab when it comes to shakwa ilallah, complaining to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't want to preach adab with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't want to preach adab with ulama. This is uh, something terrible. The ulama say that this puts one in danger of su'al khatima, of a bad ending. People who dedicated their lives to the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you disagree with them, and suddenly you insult them. Man adali waliyan faqad adhanahu bil harb. Hadith Qudsi, whoever declares war on my friend, take notice of war from me. We have Adam with the ulama, akrim ulama, the Prophet sallallahu said. And we complain to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but there's an etiquette, there's an adab. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi he said, Allahumma ilayka ashku da'fa quwwati. So, oh Allah, I complain to you the weakness of my strength. He did not say, oh Allah, oh Allah, I complain to you because you have made me weak. He 
didn't say that. He attributes the weakness to himself. Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Yaqub alayhi salam is inna ma ashku ba'thi ba'thi wa huzni illallah. Yaqub alayhi salam, he says to his people, I only uh, complain about my grief and sorrow to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not to the human beings, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whereas Iblis, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to him, Ukhruj minha, inna ka rajim, he says, fa bima awaitani, because you did this to me. Because you threw me out. Listen to the adab of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allahumma ilayka ashku da'fa quwwati. Oh Allah, I can pray to you out of, the, out of the weakness of my strength. Wa qillati hilati. And my lack of resources. My meanness of strategy. Wa hawani ala nas. And my loneliness in front of the people. Ya arham ar-rahimin. Anta rabbul mustad'afin. Wa anta rabbi. Oh, most merciful of those who show mercy. You are the Lord of the oppressed, and you are my, my Lord. Who will you entrust me to? To whom will you entrust me to? To a far off stranger who's going to ill treat me. I'm either Aduin or some narration, Qaribin, to an enemy or to a relative, i.e., Abu Lahab. That you have given a, a control over my affair. And then he says something extraordinary. He says, If you're not angry with me, then I don't care. As long as you're not angry with me, then I have no objection. I'm willing to be rejected in stone and give my life. This was his concern, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. It's interesting, we don't have time to go into the rest of the story, but the Quraysh, they see him there. Two men from the Quraysh, the sons of Rabi'ah, they send them a Christian slave, Adas. And Adas, he interacts with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He's bleeding from his head to his toe, and he makes the da'wah, and Adas is kissing his forehead and his feet, his hands and his feet. And he says, I'm from Nineveh. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminded the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam of Yunus alayhi salam at this low point of his prophetic career. He said this was worse than Uhud, the day of Ta'if. At this low point, he has hit rock bottom in his prophetic career. But remember Yunus alayhi salam. When he was fifth dhulumat, he was in underneath layers of darkness. And he made such a dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him victory. He gave him victory. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is about to give the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam a great victory. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, he took the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from Laylatul Isra wa Mi'raj from the lowest of lows to the highest of highs. So when you feel these low moments, when we feel these low moments in our lives, we should pour our heart out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the Prophet did. Pour our hearts out. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us victories. Salatu wa salamu wa rasulullah al-Mustafa wa ala sadatina wa immatina Abi Bakr Umar Rathman wa Ali wa radiyallahu ta'ala an ashabi rasulillahi ajma'in wa kudullah subhanahu wa ta'ala fi kitabi al-aziz ba'da wa kudullah a'udhu bil-ahi min ash-shaytan al-rajim inna allaha wa malaikatuhu saluna ala nabi ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima allahumma sallara muhammadin wa ala ala muhammadin kama sallayta ala ibrahim wa ala ala ibrahim fil alameen innaka halim majid allahumma barik ala muhammadin wa ala ala muhammadin kama barakta ala ibrahim wa ala ala ibrahim fil alameen innaka halim majid allahumma ahdina fi man hadayj wa aafina fi man aafayj wa tawallana fi man tawallayj wa barik lana fi ma a'atayj wa qina shar ma qatayj اللهم إنا نسألك علما نافعا ورزقا واسعا وشفاء من كل داء 
اللهم إنا نسألك بنور وجهك الكريم بحقك عليك حسن الخاتمة عند الممات لنا ولأحبابنا ولجميع المسلمين يا أرحم الراحمين ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت البهاء ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إن كنا من الظالمين لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إن كنا من الظالمين لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إن كنا من الظالمين ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تقصرنا وترحمنا أن كنا من الخاصرين يا مقلب القلوب والأخصار ثبت قلوبنا على ديك يا مقلب القلوب والأخصار ثبت قلوبنا على طاعتك وصلى الله سيد محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والحمد لله رب العالمين وأقيم الصلاة